Which pets are good for home? Might not be the best English practiced in this question. I got it. This, this is exactly are... what is asked on Google and which pets are good for home? Like which are good home body pets, you know? Tough question. It depends. I think I think animals benefit from having a lot of space, most of them having a lot of space. Even a small a small pet. You think about like a fish in a fish tank. Like that's pretty small from what their natural environment is. A terrarium for my bearded dragon, pretty small. An apartment for my dog and my cat, pretty small. So I'd say if you're saying home, as much space as you could give a pet, they all need space. But if you just want to keep a pet inside, let's just try to answer the question. Something small, small, something small. You don't want an elephant in a small space. You know, you don't want a dog or a cat in a small space. I think they get bored and that causes behavior issues. I think the one thing I will say here, again, again, the exception to all the rules is the, is the greyhound. I mean, greyhounds don't make bad apartment dogs because they're such couch potatoes. They just require a daily walk. You got to get them a raincoat. You got to get them a snow jacket. They walk every day. And if they, if they live in a snowy environment, you know, that wasn't what they were originally bred for. So you got to bundle them up really well. They got to get some kind of exercise. And if you yeah. can find some sort of fenced in area, a dog park, something to get them to run a little bit or an extended leash um, in an open field, that is also really good for them to exercise those muscles that they've been bred to, to, yeah. to grow. They are race cars. But That's my main point. Having a big house doesn't make that much difference for a greyhound because they spend all day on the sofa or on their dog bed or like 23 hours a day and one hour a day sprinting. You know, like mm. this is what the breed is meant to do is to rest yeah. and sprint. So they're kind of a weird exception. Um, do you know of, of any other big dog breeds that like kind of rest 22, 23 hours a day? Yeah. It's I mean, engine. it's like you can like these giant, they like a, a great Dane. Great Danes you can have in your house. People do all the time. People love Great Danes, but they still need exercise. Mm -hmm. So if you do have a home and you have a Greyhound or one of mm -hmm. these Great Danes or an English Mastiff or one of these 200 pound dogs, you have to at least have a yard or the ability to walk them. Yeah. Right. You can't just keep them in your house all day and like have them poop on the on the puppy pad. Oh no, and, and I would never mean something like that. They gotta have that daily walk. That's, that's yeah. critical. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to answer the question directly. Like just to have in your home <laughs> yeah. and you it never leaves your home, yeah. something small. Because I know people have had cats in their studio apartment and that and the cat never goes for a walk and it's an indoor only cat, and that cat is okay because it doesn't know any better. That's its whole life. But could you have a dog in that same environment that never leaves the studio and poops inside and sleeps inside and never leaves? I'm sure you could, but that seems like an awful existence to me for a dog or a cat. Mm -hmm. So I think like if you're going to have an, an indoor pet, a pet that mainly stays inside, and let's accept that your dog is going out for walks once or twice a day. So any, any, any animal that you can get proper exercise, I would say what's good for a home, if you can get proper exercise and a reasonable environment that they could be comfortable happy healthy clean i mean anything anything can can be good for a home yeah i think um there was a really interesting book that i read um gosh when was this uh, like a couple of years ago and it was and it was all about kind of our it was a very like futuristic book kind of all about uh digital future and this and that and there was there was some chapters on kind of robot <laughs> related pets have you seen some of this stuff of course, the, the robot dog and stuff like yes. that. Yes, and, robot dogs. Um, I've, I've I've seen there's robot dogs, and then for the elderly, there's like a seal pup that's a robot, but it's like a soft yeah. kind of pillow, and yeah. it's this idea of um, well, I mean, and there's the phenomena from when we were kids that whole Tamagotchi thing, like you yeah. a little, you have to feed yeah. it, and this and that. And um, I, I know it's kind of crazy to bring up the Pet Peeves podcast. Typically, we talk about biological pets i think for a good reason you know um oh, for sure it's what you studied but i think there's this idea of if you want that companionship if you want that affection if you want that there are ways to simulate that and you're not going to hurt a living being you know yeah. that's that's really good that you mentioned that and and we learned about these robot pets in school too it's interesting not, okay cool and that was a long time ago so they had these robo dogs 
Mm-hmm. The robo dog. They were taken around to old folks' homes to just see if there was a positive effect on their well being. Like the other question was asked, are pets good for mental health? So the robot pets, like the Tamagotchi and anything that needs to be taken care of, but because the, the robot dog would respond, come, sit, stay, bark, and, uh, you know, follow you around right, the old right. people would like to pet it and then they came out with the new version the seal one you're talking about that's softer not a robot mm-hmm. but that they can pet it mm-hmm. and then uh, it makes the people but no feel but it's bad. got but it has it is kind of a robot though it doesn't move yeah. a lot but it gives oh, like yeah, facial recognition and responses right. and stuff like that it's fascinating absolutely and the fact that it actually had positive effects on these people's stress level and blood pressure and mental health that i was pretty surprised because i think mm-hmm. that that i wouldn't but I probably would too. If I was playing with this thing and it was interacting with me and it was responding to me, I'd probably laugh and smile and have a good time. And maybe it would get boring eventually because it's a toy, but I think it would be cool at first. And if they improve the technology, even better. And then if yeah. that's your pet in home and if that's the future of pet ownership, the robo dog. I don't know that it is so much, but it was but for just, some people, it was maybe. interesting though that like a kid in his dorm room took this this i think it was a toyota based pet. i forget what the brand was sony i don't sure. know whatever and it was right. one of these kind of advanced robot dogs and he took it to his dorm room and um because you can't have pets in your dorm room but he wanted that companionship and he had it his senior year of high school so he took it to the dorm room and that was the sto- one of the stories that they told That's in this cool. book and i thought it was amazing you know yeah. like this is a robot but it's giving the, the the human part of that equation is experiencing something similar yes. Right. Right. Now exactly. there's no, there's no exchange. There's nothing ticking up there, but, right. the, but, but we're going through the motions of pet ownership. I'll tell you what, maybe the answer to the question, how do you teach pet responsibility? It's that. Start with the robo dog. Start with the robo dog. <laughs> if you can't do the robo dog, you don't deserve yeah, it. It's like the Tamagotchi. It's like uh, that parenting class you take in high school and they make you carry around a baby Yeah, that has like a robot in it that if it cries, you got to feed it. And yeah. That's it. People get some kind of great, it's like a video game where you level up yeah. you know, and you have to like solve problems. And maybe yeah. if that's what you like, and that's the part of the pet ownership that you enjoy, just taking care of something mm-hmm. um, that you get something back from it. At least that kind of psychological fraction. experience, responsibility mm-hmm. training, then the payoff and the robot is, is programmed to give you supports payoff, it. You know, the science supports it. It absolutely makes people feel better mm-hmm. to have something to interact with and take care of. So, Even if it's not actually alive. So something small or, you know, maybe consider alternatives to biology. Like, like don't okay. put Just some... make friends with your Roomba. <laughs> 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 it's got a mind of its own. Sometimes, man. It just wants to eat everything like a pet. It wants to, hey, stop chewing on that. Hey, stop it. Yeah, let that <laughs> go. Tell our Roomba. Put that down. <laughs>